What's up everyone? Today we are talking all about the alphabet and the three main components to help your little people be successful. Let's do it. So we're gonna talk about the three components to being able to teach and learn the alphabet. Uh, that's gonna be identifying or recognizing the letters, then you have writing letters, and then finally producing and listening for the beginning sounds of those letters. I would like to thank Home Chef for choosing to sponsor this video. Home Chef now has 18 different meal options available for you to choose from every single week. And my husband and my boys absolutely love every single one of those options that they have. Uh, Home Chef definitely makes cooking and preparing and especially cleanup so much easier. And they definitely take away the stress of having to plan out your meals and then go grocery shopping. And it gives me back so much more time in the day to be able to to spend with my boys every night. So I know as teachers, we all say that we can't really find the time or we just don't have the time to be able to plan out these really healthy, healthy meals and Home Chef definitely does just that. So if you have not done so already, I really encourage you guys to go and check out Home Chef. There's a link down in the description box and be sure to use the code Bridget30 to get $30 off of your first box. That's $30 off. Y'all, that's two free servings. So definitely go out and try it. What's the worst that you can do? I think you're gonna love it just as much as my family loves it and you're gonna get back so much more time in the day and I think that alone is absolutely worth it. So check out the description box for that link. Use Bridget30 on top of that. So let's get ready and jump in to some of those activities. An average kindergartner has an attention span of about 10 to 15 minutes. So a lot of the activities that you're gonna see in this video are not gonna be activities that we did all in one big chunk. They're kind of filmed sporadically kind of here and there um, over a period of time. Uh, so you're going to want to think about what are maybe two different strategies or skills that you really want to focus on and then you can do those within that 10 to 15 minutes really making it engaging and fun for your child or for your students uh, if you try to kind of do it all in one big chunk uh, it kind of takes the fun out of learning so really kind of keep that in mind as we go along through this video so there's a lot of different recommendations based on phonetically like what are children developmentally being able to produce with sound because you can kind of contort and move your tongue certain ways, uh, but it takes some time for you to be able to move that tongue in certain directions and produce certain sounds. So they have done all this research out there and some people are very different than others. Uh, I usually started with the M and the S and the T uh, because it allowed for my kids, it was sounds that they could automatically make when they were really little. Like if you think a little bitty baby when they come out of the little womb and when they first start making those sounds, they, a lot of the times they say mama first because the M sound is so easy for them to produce. Uh, same with the S and the T. All these are sounds that kids uh, very naturally are the first sounds that they produce when they're very young. So there's all this really great research out there. I'm not gonna bore you with any of that, um, but I am gonna tell you to, I would personally start off with my child's name. Uh, being able to recognize and being able to spell and write a name is so incredibly important. Uh, this is going to be a very easy way and it makes it engaging because let's be honest, a name is very like personal and it's important and they are proud of their names. So when a child is able to write out their names for the first time so they can recognize their names for the first time, you see this little kind of sparkle in their eye because they're excited about it. So I personally would start off with the name first and then we can go into kind of the letters and the sounds that you can produce on later on. Okay, so for me, I like to be able to use uh, Blaine as my example because that's the little boy that I'm teaching the alphabet to currently. And so what we do is we have some different activities to kind of change it up and for him to be able to recognize those letters out in the environment as well. And that's really important for you to kind of keep in mind here too. You don't wanna just kind of do a worksheet the entire time. You wanna give them a very uh, wide range of activities. And we're gonna get into that a little bit here and there and you're gonna pick up on it as I go along and start showing you some of these activities. So one activity that we'll do uh, for recognizing the letters in his name is I will do something called a maze hunt. So he'll kind of go through and he'll track the letter B all along and it's an uppercase B and lowercase Bs that he has to track and he has to go from the top of the paper all the way to the bottom of the paper. He enjoys these, they're fun. Um, to kind of differentiate between whether or not your child is able to kind of truly track a little 
knees and go all the way across, you can just have them circle the letters that they find them inside of this big jumble of letters. That's always fun and Blaine really enjoys doing some doing those types of activities. Another activity that Blaine really enjoys is something called the name game. And this is actually something that I did in kindergarten when I taught. For the first couple of weeks of school, we would uh, really celebrate a child and we would say, oh, it's your name. Your name has been chosen today and we're going to do all the activities revolved around that child's name. They thought it was so exciting. It was very special to them uh, and their name was kind of the name highlight for the day, but it really allowed for us to be able to talk about a variety of different letters that day. So for the name game, what we do is we take a picture of each of the kids or maybe even your family uh, and in that in a little envelope, you can have the picture on the outside of it, the name kind of written out with just a marker, nothing special, fancy, doesn't have to be on top of that envelope. Inside of the envelope, here's what is special. Uh, inside of it, you're gonna take maybe a sentence strip or you can use an index card or a piece of paper, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Write out the name and then cut those letters out into their individual pieces. And then what they'll have to do is they're gonna take out the little pieces from inside of the envelope, they're gonna place them in front um, with the envelope kind of showing and they have to kind of put them back into the order. Now here's the kicker and this is the part I think that so many families or teachers kind of forget and they don't really think about. You have to make sure that your child is saying those letters as they're moving them across. They put their finger on it, they're saying B, awesome, L, a, and you go along with it. Because if they're not actually producing the sounds as they're moving it, they're really never making those connections of, oh, this is the name and here's what it looks like. They're not making those connections. So it's super important that you're having your child say those letters as they're moving them across and lining them up to make the name. So that's the second one. The third activity that we like to do is just a very, very simple and old school. It's an ugly mat, y'all, please don't judge me. Uh, it's just a matching. And so we have a ton of magnetic letters that we've purchased over the years from the Dollar Tree, the kids love them. They're always exciting to kind of, they change up the sizes and the colors. I think they're just really fun for kids to kind of play with. But what Blaine does is he just simply takes out the letter. We talk about that letter and he has to match them up, uh, being able to recognize it. You can go super crazy and cool if you want them to be able to match the uppercase to the lowercase, or you can do it uppercase to uppercase. I will tell you this, that when they're first identifying, it is so much easier for kids to identify uppercase letters then it is lowercase. So if it's the first time, just go for it. Give them all uppercase letters because they're easier for them to identify. Um, when I was teaching kindergarten, I would do some of my alphabet assessments. It never really shocked me when the kids were able to recognize all of the uppercase letters and they weren't able to recognize not a single lowercase letters because that's just naturally how they start to learn those letters in those alphabets. Um, so the last activity that I have for you, and this is a really fun one, and this is something you can do in the car, you can do on when if you have magazines, you could do it when you're reading a bedtime story and you have books out in front of you, is just being able to recognize pointing at them and saying those letters. And I would say, mm, I spy with my little eye on this page, uh, the letter B. And so Blaine would have to find the letter B on that page. Or if we're driving the car, same thing, it's the I spy with my little eye, he knows it by heart. I spy with my little eye, uh, I, the letter A and he would have to find the letter A while we're at the stop sign, and he'll show me where the letter A is and he'll point to it and he gets so excited. So those are some activities that are really simple and easy that you can implement to help getting your child to be able to recognize those letters. So along with recognizing and identifying those letters, it's incredibly important for us to teach our kids the correct way of writing those letters. I would always cringe when my students would come in during kindergarten and they had this really poor formation for writing their letters. And it's incredibly hard to get them to break that habit. So this piece is very, very important. And I have kind of three pieces that I do here at Home with Blaine to help him learn the formation of writing those letters correctly. The first step that we do is we have some sort of a kinesthetic piece. And when I say kinesthetic, it's something that allows for movement. They're manipulating some sort of material. Um, I've used beans in the past, I've used Play-Doh, uh, we've used wiki sticks, and then we've also um, kind of used a little sandbox. So I would take a 
a pencil box, pour some sand in it, and he would be able to kind of write it with that little sandbox with his finger. Um, and this is that kinesthetic piece, and they're just kind of manipulating and moving these materials. You can do this freehand by just kind of creating it and having it there. You can take a piece of paper, write the big letter incredibly big on that paper, and then have them put those pieces just to kind of trace it and follow that along. Uh, this is a really fun, engaging piece, and I think this is a piece that, for my son, he really, really enjoys, uh, probably out of the three the most. The second piece to that is going to be the tracing part. Um, this is going to be where you will want to either have them do it with their finger or have them do it with a highlighter or some sort of a crayon or pencil. All of these are materials are really great materials. Um, I personally would use it in that order. I would use a finger first for having them kind of tracing out those letters in their names or the letter that you're focusing on that week. Um, or then you can have them start to uh, use it with a highlighter, which is a really nice tool because they can still see kind of the dots and the dash for where the letters belong um, so they can just kind of trace over it with that highlighter then using a crayon um, what's really interesting is I attended a Orton Gillingham training when I was in kindergarten and they said that in order to help kids to really understand the, how to hold a crayon correctly or how to trace and write those letters correctly if you took a crayon and you broke it in half and kind of created a little nub it allowed them to kind of pinch and hold on to it um, which helped them with holding that um, that pencil or that utensil correctly then they would trace over it and then finally having them actually try it out with a pencil so I would definitely do it with those four I, you would have your finger a highlighter a crayon and then a pencil to practice at the end of it now just to also remember that you don't want to have this be something where they are practicing it over and over and over again I would do maybe maximum twice that you're having them trace it and I would even do it in this order I would have them do their kinesthetic I would have them trace it once and then finally they're gonna to try to write it by themselves for the last time and this is something that you can definitely try every single day to get them used to doing it but I wouldn't exceed more times than that so kinesthetic then tracing it and then finally here comes the writing piece. Uh, for the writing piece, I would definitely try to do it with a crayon first by itself. Uh, then you can go to having it with a dry erase marker. So if you have access to any type of dry erase materials, I would definitely use a dry erase marker. My son loves it. He thinks it's so fascinating that he could just go through and erase it with his finger. He thinks it's so cool. And then finally doing it with uh, an actual pencil and having them practice writing out those letters to their names. So those are kind of the big pieces of it, the big components, um, but I also think that they're very important and critical components to helping your child write those letters correctly. Don't forget that if you do see that your, your child or your student isn't quite holding that pencil correctly or they're starting in a poor formation you want to really identify what they did incorrectly don't say oh no you did that wrong you really want to make sure that you said listen you started from the bottom and then you went out you have to go from the top and go down to the bottom you want to be very explicit with what they did incorrectly so that they can understand it and they're kind of hearing that and you want to kind of model that for them show them how to do it correctly and then have them go back and try to do that the correct way at the end. So all of these pieces together I think will really kind of help your child or your student be able to learn how to write those letters the correct way. So the final piece and the final component of being able to teach letters um, is going to be the sounds of the letter and these are all very very important because this is going to be what allows your child to be able to read those words in those wonderful books that you are reading with them. Uh, one way that I love 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 teaching the sounds and the letters is through songs. <laughs> I absolutely love songs and so one of the songs that I have and I do this with Blaney every day and we've kind of been working our way up <laughs> the ladder of being able to remember all these letters and sounds is through a song that we have that includes motions now when I say this that each letter will say a sound but the sound has a motion to go along with it and allows them to kind of have that kinesthetic piece of they're doing a movement to be able to remember the sound so for instance we have a says ah so we when we say ah I tell him it's like when you see a spider and you go ah so a says ah and then you have B that says buh and he knows that this means a bat so B for bat a for 
ah. And so as we go about singing this song, I feel ridiculous doing this on camera, but as we go about singing the song, he kind of remembers all of them. So I'm gonna give you guys just kind of a little touch, piece of um, some of the movements that I do. So we have A says ah, B goes ba, C goes k for cold, and then we have D says duh, for dig and then it keeps going and going and going so this is a really great way and I remember when I would be in kindergarten that when we were learning how to sound out words and a child got to the point where they got to a letter and they couldn't quite remember what that letter said I would just do the motion for them and it was so incredible to see that they just automatically knew exactly what I was talking about because they had that memorized that was something that we practiced every single day and this is something that you could do in the car you could do it on a walk you could do it anywhere at any time of the day it doesn't have to be during that really kind of structured time of sitting down at your table so that is one way for you to be able to teach those sounds. Another way is to really look at pictures and being able to sort the sounds in those pictures. So if I was to do the first letter for B for Blaine, we have certain pictures that, that Blaine would be able to kind of see. We would talk about the picture. I would say, oh, look, this is a bat, a bat. Hmm, B says B -b bat does that make the b sound? And he would have to tell me yes or no. And we would kind of make that little sort here and there of yes or no. Uh, you could do this with pictures that you find out in a magazine. This can be something that you kind of see in a book and you can point it out in a book and have them kind of say yes or no of whether it does or does not be, have that beginning sound. Um, I use little picture cards that I've kind of created that allows me to be able to sort some of those sounds. As you go along, <laughs> and as you start to learn more of those sounds, you can start combining them. Now, I will tell you that I will do not focus on more than one sound. Um, as you go along and you're kind of reviewing some of those sounds, be sounds because they've already learned it, you can have up to six sounds, but I wouldn't really do any more than that. Um, but really focusing on just one a week for them to be able to kind of retain that information and to kind of process that in their brain. So uh, kind of sorting out those sounds, having some of those motions, being able to locate them in books. Uh, we also will do where we're kind of driving out in the streets and I say, hmm, I see something that has the b sound and he has to kind of find it and tell me what it is. Um, it's similar to that I spy game, but again, it's something that allows him to understand that learning is continuous. It happens anywhere um, at any time of the day. It's not something where we have to sit down at our kitchen table together and basically have this structured time. Uh, it makes it fun and engaging and he also really, really enjoys this time of being able to kind of learn new things. It makes it fun. If you guys are interested in learning all of the different motions that I have for the alphabet song, I'm gonna leave a link in the description box of a little blog post that has a video clip of me doing all of the different motions to the sounds for the alphabet. Uh, so be sure to check that out if you are interested in trying to learn all of them. Uh, also, anything that sounded super interesting to you guys, I'm gonna try to leave it in the description box. If I forget it by chance, which I'm promising that I most likely will forget something, uh, leave a comment and we'll try to get that to you guys so that you can uh, get access to it and start using it. Also, do not forget to try out Home Chef. Uh, the link is the first one in the description box. Use that code Bridget30 to get $30 off of your box uh, and start enjoying it and get a little bit of time back into your day <laughs> because food planning is sucking it out. I'm focused. Okay, so <laughs> Uh, be sure guys if you have not already give this video a thumbs up because it is uber awesome and you absolutely love me uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys all next week bye <laughs> it's exciting I'm excited so watch I'm gonna pinch and then I'm gonna flick it up and remember it snug as a bug right here and that's how I write, okay? Yeah, you want to try it? Mommy can go. Nope, one finger. Nope. I want you to do it right here. Pinch. Good job. Watch. Remember, watch look, it's gonna be snug as a bug right here. Ew, I don't want the worm. Down. Pick it up. Nope. I made a nope. baby bee. Oh, you made a baby bee. I'm sorry, baby. Let me do that again.
I told you. Look, see? Then he grows up as a mommy. Uh, no, it doesn't work that way. 